Okay, welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stack live stream for May 13th. We are back with ESE Entertainment, Conrad Vasela. Conrad, welcome back. I'm back, Jack. How's it going? <laughs> Fantastic. You have uh, your back actually with some uh, very solid news. You get a new acquisition which we're going to get into, get into all the details and everything. But for you know anybody that's just tuning in for the first time, our goal with this live stream is to bring you those stocks which have that 10x to 100x upside potential. Uh, companies going after three things, multi-billion dollar market opportunities. Uh, they're at a key inflection point and there are multiple catalysts in place. And ESC is a perfect example of that, uh, of the 10 bagger plus. So far, ESC, I think, have you been a 14? You're a 14, you're so far at a 14X, you know, at the peak. I mean, there's been a pullback here with a market correction, but uh, so, you know, when, when when Conrad, when you, you know, when you came onto our platform, you had, you know, obviously all three of those things. The stock was, I think, uh, 28, 30 cents. You hit a high of 450 just, uh, you know, last month. Now we had a bit of a, you know, the market uh, things are on sale right now. The tech stocks are have been on sale since February. Uh, so uh, your stock is still up. What is it, 5X? It, it, it's, you know, roughly around that, but what a great time to get in into the deal, right? You saw the potential, you know, it ripped almost to five bucks. What a great time to get back in, uh, load up on some shares because, I'm going to say it and keep saying it. We're just getting started. Billion plus is the goal. And I said there's a little bit of a storm coming. Well, we'll start with today and there's more coming. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So it's so it's very interesting because right now uh, the stock is pretty much, uh, what is it? It's, it's it's kind of where you were almost in, in January. But I mean, this, I mean the, the, there's been so much value created just in the last few months. And now you have, you know, everything is actually starting to kick in. Now, uh, back in, in you know back in was it in January when you came on, you said you had a hundred. You know, your goal was to uh, I think to what to get to a hundred million uh, in the next twelve months or so. You know, run rate. Uh, you had a whole bunch of deals in the pipeline, a hundred million plus w w revenues in, in the M and A pipeline. Uh, you closed uh, the infrastructure deal, which was about forty million Canadian uh, last month. You're announcing a new deal, which we're going to get into all the details. I think you got some other things cooking, but you know, I think we should start off with um, the new director you brought on, Rick Brace. So, explain to us, you know, his kind of his background, and you know, you know how he got involved, why you brought him, and like, what's the, you know, what's the connection here? And then we'll go into all the exciting details. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> If that doesn't get you fired up, then nothing will. I mean, you know, from an actual operator standpoint, Rick Brace has built two multi-billion dollar companies. Most recently, Rogers. He was a president of Rogers Media listed on the TSC and on the NASDAQ. They're roughly sitting at about a $30 billion market cap. Uh, and this is an individual that has helped build those companies from the ground level and get them to the point where they are now. Um, talk about a mentor, talk about a Rolodex, uh, and an individual that could come in and really help us drive to a billion plus. I mean, it doesn't take a genius to figure out guys like this do not come onto companies unless they see massive potential. Uh, and with conversations I've had with him, he knows where we're heading. He believes in the vision, billion plus. Uh, and he's eager to get involved and it's been phenomenal. He's been very hands-on and we haven't even scratched the surface of, of tapping into his network. And when we do, we're just going to continue to snowball in an upward trajectory. Okay. No, it's, 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 it's really, you know, I mean, look, it's, it's uh, one of the, one of the, the key things is to, is to surround yourself with, uh, you know, with, with, you know, with the right people, with the right guides who can, who've been there, who've done it. Uh, I mean, and this is the guy. I mean, he's been there, done on, on a massive scale. You know, this is this is, you know, this is at the, you know, this is the guy at the top of his game. So I think uh, there's going to be a lot of value add. Um, what do you do? You do you kind of bounce ideas off him when you're looking at these acquisitions, things like that? Like in terms of strategy, like what? How involved does he get? Like what's what's kind of the you know? Yeah, no, and this is the exciting part. You know, he's a very active 
uh, director and he made it crystal clear from day one he wants to be involved in M&As, he wants to be involved in business development, he wants to open up that Rolodex. Like it's just exciting that he's he's so you know eager to get involved and he said towards the latter part of his years at Rogers there was a massive uptick in esports and gaming and the conversations around this industry and he knows it's the next big thing. Uh, like we always talked about on the show, this is a generational opportunity. You know, especially with mobile gaming coming on hard, um, you know, his background in the media and telecom side. I mean, this is a home run opportunity. Right? Like in terms of like the rights, the media rights, that's like part of his thing, right? For, so that's that's. Oh, yeah. Good. You want to talk about lineage? I mean, he's done deals with the NFL, NBA, uh, MLB, Olympics. It's as big as it gets. This guy has been at the pinnacle of the game uh, for so long. And we're just all ears and just, you know, let's make things happen. And, and we're very eager to just, like I said, open up that Rolodex and execute. Okay, excellent, excellent. So speaking of execution, uh, you announced today uh, LOI, this new acquisition. What is it? The, 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 it it's, uh, give, give us the details on this. I, I think the name kind of gives it away, but they're called Digital Motorsports, okay? This is a booming group with a portfolio of intellectual property. You know, they have a cloud-based racing service. They build their own simulators. They're an A to Z solution, tech and peripherals and actual simulators for the digital motorsports sector. Uh, and they're at the forefront of it. And combined with what we're already doing in this space, you know, the vision is simple from both sides. We want to be the number one digital motorsports and esports group in the world. And they share that same vision. Uh, and it just allows us to do it that much faster with these guys. So, so it's okay. So, really. Uh, you you kind of like you, right now you're you're involved you have like a, you know you're, you're very involved like in, in the motorsports side right now in in, in esports and you know kind of that that motorsports uh, sim racing focus so what kind of synergy so what what kind of synergies are there are there with this with this new group and is is this I mean like how are you going to be able to leverage this and like what's the upside yeah. and, and what are they doing in the revenues what kind of numbers are they that's the big idea that's, <laughs> that's the big question everybody has you know what's the uh, numbers. Well, let's start with the numbers, the exciting part, you know, approximate run rate uh, for this year is going to be about 5 million Canadian, but most importantly, profitable. Okay. Uh, and they have great margins. And that's why we're so eager to invest more into the digital motorsports side of the business because it's huge upside and it's a very profitable side of the business. You know, we've seen upwards of 30% plus profitability uh, margins on the digital motorsports side of our business. They're doing similar numbers. So we want to continue to expand and we think the market is primed for consolidation. And with putting pieces of the puzzle like this together, we're really consolidating Europe in a hurry. Uh, they do a lot These of- These guys are based, they're in Ireland, right? Correct, but they're European wide, right? They're okay. running European scale tournaments. Um, you know, They have partnerships throughout all of Europe. They have distribution globally. Um, they're headquartered in Highland, but they're moving fast. We're talking 100% year over year growth. Uh, and with our synergies, I mean, we're, we're going to really take off. Okay. So, okay. So the takeaways, which uh, this wasn't mentioned in the press release. So this is actually valuable information people are getting in this live stream. Uh, I hope you can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So 5 million revenues, which is pretty substantial uh, yeah. look, in this space. You know, this the, the, this is not you know the esports space still is you know that that's a that's a pretty big number. There's not not a lot of guys who are generating you know big numbers. So it's a, it's a it it counts. So you you're doing the 14 million with with the other thing. So you're you're getting close. I mean, you're you're basically uh, if I'm doing my math correctly, you're about 20. You get you can be 20 25 percent of the way towards your goal of the hundred million, and we're already in May. So you could you could uh, pull it off. You you could pull it off still. Uh, the hundred uh, in uh, you know by, those, in the, by the end of twenty one. 
like I said, you know, those are historical numbers for those yeah. groups. Seven think, months. Yeah. And, you know, those are approximate numbers, but proof's in the pudding when the actual financials come out and you guys are going to start seeing these numbers. Um, it's not about pulling it off, Jack. We're going to do this. We're going to get a hundred million revenue. Uh, we're going to push towards that billion dollar plus market cap. Uh, and we're going to continue to grow. Okay. And what, can you talk about the terms of the deal? Like, you know, what's, uh, in the, you know, what's, what's, how much you're paying for this? Yeah, we can't get into any specifics right now. Uh, we're going to be working on the definitive agreement, uh, and we'll happily release all the details. Um, but rest assured, it's aligned with our strategy, uh, more based on shares uh, and less capital outlay. So it keeps the structure tight, uh, keeps the company sound. So it's in line with what we've been doing from day one and what we're going to continue to do moving forward. OK, uh, now here's what's interesting Now, you know, why? Why do you have such a big focus on motorsports? Are, and is that going to be more? Are you going to be kind of like building a dominant position in motor? Is that going to be like your, your, your focus initially to, to kind of dominate motorsports of East? E How do I the way esports motorsports? Is that like the is, is that kind of the goal here or what's? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's it's our goal becoming a dominant esports company, right? A whole 360 solution and the digital motorsports is just one of our pillars. Uh, a great comparable is you see motorsports games on the NASDAQ. Uh, they're hyper focused only on digital motorsports. You know, it's a 250 plus million market cap company, uh, roughly a $20 stock on the NASDAQ. What's what's the symbol? What's the which, which one? Which motorsports one? games. Motorsports games. OK, so that's a great comparable. You know, we're going to do similar revenue numbers to them just based on what we're doing on the motorsport side with our business. Right. And it's just one of the pillars that we have. So it really gives you context into how aggressive we're going to go into that space and how well we're doing in that space. OK, OK. Uh, one, no, one of the other things is that um, I mean, like, I think you have you have a deal with is like Porsche, a couple of other uh, major, you know, brands in this space. So I'm thinking that, you know, in the motorsports area, uh, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, when it comes to advertising, brand sponsors, all that stuff, there's a lot more money because those, I mean, you have, you have companies which, which have a lot of money to spend. You know, Formula One has always been like, you know, the big money, you know, type of, you know, uh, you know advertising and all that. I mean, it's, I think it's bigger than like the NFL, really. Isn't it big? I mean. It's it's huge. Yeah. The, that is another reason why we're going to dive into this space. Um, I really enjoy this space. Uh, I've been involved in, you know, racing, digital motorsports for a long time. But you hit the nail on the head. Look at the quality of partnerships. Porsche, Kia Motors. You know, we're working on deals with Mercedes Benz. You know, multi-billion dollar groups, uh, but also some of the biggest brand recognition across the world. You mentioned Formula One as well, NASCAR, MotoGP, Indy. You know, this is an entire ecosystem, like you said, that is bigger than the NFL because it encompasses more, right? There's well, rally it's, car. It's global, yeah. It's, it's, oh, it's, it's, it's global, massive. Global, it's massive. And, and this is, uh, you know, it's, what's interesting also is that because that it, it's kind of the, um, yeah, it's it's something where you have the brand. It's it's all kind of all all interconnected. So you know what it is, Jack. It's tier one. That's what it is. It's tier one. When you look at the you know, sponsors and digital motorsports, you're talking about ro the Rolexes of the world, high end yeah. brands, the real money, man. This is big time uh, European money, global money that's entering into that space. And they know. I've had conversations with them. They know Gen Z. Is the future millennials? They need to attack them now. You know what's and they got to go with esports to get and, them. Right? And, and, and you know what's interesting is that, um, especially the the automakers, they are they're really focused on Gen Z and millennials because I think a lot of kids today they're not as excited about cars as they used to be. It's like it's like the like you know they're not. It's it's sort of it's one of those things where they're not you know they're like oh you know the the cars they drive they're not you know they're not it's not like one of those things where uh, there's like a generational thing, and I think the brands really need to uh, they they got they got to start um, the marketing right now. Otherwise, uh, you know, they're going to be left behind. 
And and you're 100% right. And there's no better example. Google it. Lamborghini just came in hard with Rocket League. They did a whole branding campaign with Lamborghini. I mean, we're talking tier one stuff, right? Uh, and they're going really big into this space. Okay, interesting, interesting. Okay, so so you get so you get the, this. And when is this deal? When do you anticipate this new acquisition to close? So you know, we obviously have to go through the definitive agreement, uh, go through some legal due diligence, etc. Um, you know, approximately, you know, call it two three months uh, on the high end. We're going to be working diligently uh, to get this thing done faster, obviously, but. You know, we just have to go through the necessary steps to close. But both sides, myself and, you know, Digital Motorsports team are keen and eager to get to work and get this done as soon as possible. Okay. Okay. So uh, would you say 60 days probably or? I would say approximately 60 to 90 days. Okay. Fair okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Because, I mean, you know, things, things sometimes, yeah, I mean, like the, the, the infrastructure deal took a couple months to close. The, that, the, the, yeah. The, okay. Uh, excellent. Okay. And, um, interest. Okay. So, so just kind of to recap, like right now before this deal, I mean, what's the, the share count, like, you know, what's the, so the market companies now, like what's, uh, what, how many shares out now approximately? Approximately 50 million shares out, uh, approximate market cap, you know, roughly, you know, 90 million, um, kind of hovering around that level. But I mean, you look at the comparables. You six look at, x. So basically, yeah. you're looking at six times, which is about uh, a third, maybe a half to a third, um, of of what you know some of the pures are. Right? Yeah, I mean, approximately around that, right? Like five, six x. But the the reality is, you look at the comparables, and you see the billion dollar market caps. You know, EGLX. Uh, score gaming, you know, you look at some of these groups and you get, and you just say, what an opportunity to get in at the ground floor, right? We're 10x from here, you know, that that's the goal from our side, right? It's very interesting that, you know, like right now, like, e, you know, uh, the EGLX, like they're getting a lot of attention recently. They're on, you know, they got onto NASDAQ finally. And, uh, but it, there is a lot of similarities in, in where you are now and kind of where they were, you know, about, I don't know, 18 months ago, maybe 24 months ago, roughly. So it's like, it, it, the, it's kind of a similar path. And it was, it was all based on acquisitions for the most part. Yeah. And, and they've done a phenomenal job and, you know, we follow them closely and it's, it's actually eerily similar. You know, they were kind of stuck in the dollar fifty to two dollar range for quite some time, uh, and then they went on a bit of a acquisition terror and just started to build those pieces up and up and up. And and now they're on the Nasdaq and billion plus market cap. So, um, congratulations to them. Uh, but we're next in line. It's our turn now. Uh, and they've kind of put out the blueprint. But uh, I think we could do it faster and leaner. Uh, and that's our goal. Okay. And, and actually, so, so there's a couple of things also, you, you know, like you have like your, your, e you know, you have your, uh, your, your team, right? You got esports and they got a team. So there's a lot of, uh, I mean, they have a slightly different focus, which is more like media stuff. You know, it's more of a, you know, you're doing the actual, so it's, it's a little, it's a little different, but it's a lot, a lot of kind of, uh, uh, uh similarities. Uh, so what's interesting, there is, um, you know, there's a couple of uh, ETFs now in the space. You know, the the you know esports or video game ETFs happening, and uh, this actually ties in here. Uh, so user 007, no, no, Nasdaq. So I think if you can get a, if you can get a Nasdaq listing at some point in the next six months, that would also make the stock more attractive for these uh, you know these ETFs and the, everybody else. And and again, there's not that many pure play esports deals on Nasdaq. Exactly. This is why exactly. the EGLX is, is getting some traction. There's not a lot of, you know. Yeah, and, of and, and let's take it one step further. There's not a, a lot of pure play esports companies that actually generate revenue or profit. So that's our huge differentiator. We're actually generating revenues and we're focused on getting to profitability, right? So break even profitability as soon as we can. Um, you know, you'll be hard pressed to find groups that are doing that. And as it pertains to NASDAQ, I mean, it's obviously a goal of the company to, to make it to the highest level uh, and one day list NASDAQ, but we got to take care of business first, keep building on this story, 
we got a lot of chips to add on. Like I said, I keep saying it. I got a hundred million in the revenue uh, pipeline in revenues in the M&A pipeline. Guess what? That hasn't changed. We got to keep knocking these down. There's an example of one today. We got to keep getting through this uh, and just keep acquiring. Um, so th that's why I'm saying this is a ground floor opportunity right now. Well, okay, so 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 this deal is, is going to close, you know, probably next, you know, 60, 90 days. What else do you have? Uh, what else are you looking at in the pipeline? I'll just let I'll just smile a little bit, but I, I said a storm's coming, guys. This is a teaser. There's more to come. Okay, okay. Excellent. So, okay. so be patient, but when I come on the show, it, it's real and we bring real news and we're building a monster here, guys. So so buckle up. This is a a deal you want to stay in long, uh, and now is a great time to get in. Okay. No. So, so so no. So it's it's pretty interesting actually, and, and the stock is actually held up surprisingly well with this you know with the current market meltdown. You know a lot of our a lot of our you know you know high flyers are down uh, you know sixty percent plus seventy. It's been you know like every. Everything is 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 has been taking a beating. Uh, of course, you know when things turn, everything goes you know the same at the same uh, uh, percentage wise. But uh, what's uh, kind of right? I want to kind of wrap up with a, maybe give a quick recap. What, uh, some of the other growth initiatives you have, you know, give us kind of like an update on what's what's happening with the esports teams, the you know all the all the other you know the, the brands, everything else. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think I wanted to highlight on a, a big news release we had last week, and I don't think we got the credit we deserved. Uh, we did a deal with Bitcoin Vault. Uh, we signed a seven-figure contract, it was, you know, roughly over just a million bucks um, to roll out uh, a really cool initiative. So we're doing a reality TV show for esports and gaming, and we're rolling that out in Japan, Korea, Vietnam, uh, and Brazil. So, you know, we're signing big contracts here. We're doing huge things. Um, unfortunately, it just isn't actually reading the, the, the news releases here, clearly, uh, because these are huge things, right? Uh, and they set the foundation for bigger contracts in the future, uh, multi-million dollar contracts in the future. Uh, so that's something that was really exciting recently. Um, our team, Kick has been doing phenomenally well. Um, they're entering into some big tournaments. We have some really cool news coming up um, actually within the next few days. So so keep your uh, ears peeled for that. Uh, and, you know, just in general, we're building, you know, from an organic standpoint, every month we're building and growing. We have new contracts, new initiatives in place. Uh, it's just a really exciting time for this sector. Uh, and we see so much growth. Uh, it's unbelievable. You know, even in speaking with the guys at WPG, our acquisition, you know, they had their best month ever last month. So, you know, if that doesn't tell you something, nothing will, right? So we're really working together, growing month over month. And these acquisitions, I'm telling you, they're just going to continue to bolt on and add that extra value. Um, and the pipeline is robust. So I think I think so, one of the key things also is, and I think people probably will, will see more of that in down in the next few months is that, you know, it's not just you're not just making acquisitions just like a i mean you're actually you're creating value there's synergies yeah. like there's there's actually there's there's thought into it because like you know like, like this motorsports things ties into your existing motorsports kind of portfolio so it all it, it, these things have you know there's a lot of synergies here ways to leverage it, all these things so it's it's, it's, it's all yeah important. it's all synergistic and we're staying in line with what we said accretive groups groups that are profitable you know we're adding onto the bottom line, we're making money, you know, that's what it's all about. Um, we're going to continue to do that with these groups. But the synergies are, I mean, it's crystal clear, like I said, you know, WPG had their best month ever. And we just closed the deal big surprise, right? Uh, that's the type of deal you like to do. Okay, excellent. Conrad, right. let's let's wrap up here. Uh, two things. One is, um, what, what do you have in the pipeline coming up? Like the next, what can we look forward to hearing in the next, let's call it, uh, you know, four to six weeks? Yeah, I think it's just best to follow the story. We're always putting out quality news, but we are going to be very aggressive on the acquisition trail. So uh, really stay in tune with the story. 
uh, and get acquainted with our current acquisitions. And I, th I think it's just, like I said, this is a ground floor opportunity, guys. Um, hopefully you could read it in my face, but it, it's time to support and, and think longer term here because we got some really interesting stuff coming up in the pipeline. Okay, so on that note, you know, last question we always like to ask is, okay, based on what you have right now, you know, top three reasons why investors, you know, should consider uh, ESC today. Actually, you know, before before you actually say anything, I should add that, you know, you know, so far you've been right because when you first came on, you know, from the day one till till up to the peak, the stock was up for like fourteen x or, I mean, I forgot, was, I think fourteen x. So. Whoever's watching, pay attention to what Conrad is going to say now. <laughs> this is another. You have a, a chance. This is another bite at the apple. This is these things don't go straight up. They go up, and then they they crash, and they go up again higher. That's the way. That's just the way it works. So that's the way it works. Let's 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 let's, let's hear what's what top three reasons today. We're, we're gonna keep it consistent. Multi billion dollar opportunity. This is a generational opportunity. ESC is a billion plus market cap opportunity. And number three, you want to be a part of a group that's lean, has a tight structure, and that has a massive M&A pipeline and ready to execute. And actions speak louder than words. You know, we continue to execute, we continue to deliver. Uh, and guys, this is ground floor opportunity. As Jack said, it's another opportunity to get in uh, and position yourself wisely um, for future growth. Excellent. Uh, Conrad, on that note, uh, I want to thank you, and uh, we look forward to uh, hearing more from you hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I always love being on and excited to be back on soon. Fantastic. Conrad, thank you again. Have a great day, everyone.